not that. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, so my name is Faisal Kayyum, uh, and I will be talking about the effects of solidization degree on the local deformation and damage behavior of C45 EC steels today. So the flow of my presentation will be uh, that I will talk a little bit about the background and our motivation regarding this work. Um, I will start with the material manufacturing and characterization, how we collected the microstructural data and how we statistically analyzed it and what did we observe. Then I will talk a little bit about how we use that microstructural data as RVE input for our crystal plasticity based model development. Um, coupled with the material model and damage parameters and then running the simulations and collecting the results. The results which we get from crystal plastic simulations are quite huge um, and then we want to process them to get some useful results and that is what I will talk about in the section of analysis of local results for the local stress strain and damage in, in, in different regimes and different uh, places and in the end I will conclude my presentation with the conclusion remarks and then the outlook. So if I talk about the background and motivation, so for example, generally the steel wires are made uh, after hot rolling and um, our, our manufacturing process gives it a different specific microstructure. If we want to improve the mechanical properties of our materials, what we um, do usually is we do post uh, manufacturing heat treatment and um, mechanical working, such as we can, um, if we cold roll our material and then we spheroidize our material to break down the cementite particles into smaller, um, uh, into smaller particles, uh, we get a different kind of microstructure from this kind of uh, mechanical working. And on the other hand, if we do spheroidization first and then do uh, cold rolling and then do spheroidization again, we get, get different kinds of microstructures. And, and, and the material is same, so the chemistry is same, but based on the mechanical routes, we get different mechanical properties and then different um, uh, and, uh, different flow stresses and different, uh, yield, um, different yielding of the material, um, yeah. So we know that the manufacturing process routes result in different microstructural attributes and eventually affect the mechanical properties. The mechanical properties of a certain material, despite of the grain size, heterogeneity, and distribution, and the manufacturing technique employed are also dependent on the deformation degree and strain rate, the composition of the phases, chemistry of the material, and working temperatures. So all these um, attributes basically affect the atomic adjustments in the material, which then in turn affect the microstructural features and which result in different large-scale deformation behaviors. Now, if we want to fundamentally model our material, um, what we are trying to do here is um, we are trying to develop scale bridging simulations with increasing length of scale problems um, where we fundamentally tell the simulation model what the material microstructure will look like and it can tell us how large deform how the material will behave on bulk as well as on the local scales. To develop these kind of material models, we want to have a numerical simulation model which is based on real uh, my physical microstructural properties. Um, we want our material model to have flexible uh, to be flexible for modeling single or multi or multiple phases. We want it to be dependent on the composition. We want it to be dependent on the grain orientation and depending on the loading conditions, for example, tension, compression, or m m multiple loading conditions or so on. And then once we get our data, we want to process it to obtain global or local deformation or damage behaviors based on what we are interested in and how we want to use that data for further material development. Um, so Damask Dusseldorf Advanced Material Simulation Kit provides a very interesting solution for the, for these kind of uh, problems. It is a crystal plasticity based material model which has been flexibly developed to um, give in user defined microstructures as RVE inputs. And um, then we can choose uh, from physical or phenomenological material based models which are already incorporated in um, and we can define the attributes critically for each phase. Um, we can define different loading conditions and then we can run our simulations and and, 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 and once the simulation results are complete, uh, we can um, then post-process the data to obtain either average 
behavior or um, the local behavior um, of, of a material of how the local stress and strains are distributed. So in this research, uh, we will be developing these kind of methodologies and I will show uh, with an example of how we are doing it for a material. So for the manufacturing of material, for example, with something which I already discussed after hot rolling, if we do cold rolling and then spheroidization, we get a certain uh, material uh, microstructure associated with the material. So we see that the microstructure is slightly aligned in the rolling direction. And for further analysis, what we did was we um, we see that um, the the cementite particles are um, formed and uh, are present in the form of bands on the grain boundaries and are not homogeneously distributed uh, within the ferrite matrix. We see that there are some very large grains, but also some very fine grains. For example, in this magnified picture, we can see that there are some very small ferrite grains as well as there are some very large ferrite grains. So there is a heterogeneity in the grain size distribution as well. And if you look at the orientation distribution, um, generally it is uh, uh, more or less evenly distributed, but slightly more uh, biased uh, towards the uh, 001 and uh, 111 orientations. And to, to, to see the, uh, the results more quantitatively, we see that the aspect ratio of the ferrite grains ranges between one and and touches three, some grains have a very elongated aspect ratio of up to five. And then we see that the equivalent radius of grains is almost very high some grains are very very small and the large grains are almost touching 20 micrometer equivalent radius grain size now this is this is what we call what we will call material a in our um, presentation today and on the other hand if we look at another material for example after hot rolling if we spheroidize the material first and then uh, then cold roll it and then spheroidize it again what we get is we get a, a, a relatively different microstructure and we see that in, in this kind of uh, manufacturing uh, route, we see that the cementite particles are relatively more homogeneously distributed within the matrix. Um, the ferrite grains are also relatively equivalent size. We again see in this magnified picture that there are some ferrite grains which are very small, but generally the trend is relatively less. And the orientation distribution uh, function of this kind of uh, microstructure is also neutral. So this so this um, methodology yields um, a, a, a relatively better microstructurally manufactured material. And we see here that the aspect ratio of grains majorly lies between one and two, and very few grains are between two and three. And the equivalent radius of the grains is also less, generally less than 15. Um, uh, so the grain size is also relatively slightly smaller. Now we get these um, microstructures, um, um, we get all this data using this EBSD um, measurements uh, from our materials, and then uh, we want to use it for uh, the simulations. Uh, the cementite particles in, in the current case for the simulations were only given elastic parameters because, um, yeah, the difference between the cementite particles and the ferrite matrix, the me mechanical properties is quite large. So cementite particles are only assigned elastic parameters for um, for easier um, numerical calculations um, the ferrite matrix was uh, was provided a phenomenological um, crystal plasticity model with um, with some physical and a few fitting parameters which were adjusted by comparing with the global deformation behavior of the material and then the ferrite matrix was also assigned um, a simple ductile damage criteria with uh, critical plastic strain um, in the model uh, which was adjusted parametrically based on the literature so now once we have our um, microstructural attributes as RVEs, we have our material model parameters in line. Uh, we use Damask and then loaded these RVEs under monotonic tensile loads in horizontal direction. So once we give all this data in and run our simulations for um, stable results, um, we can then process the results in uh, average global behavior and local stress and strain and damage evolutions. And that is what I'll talk about now.
So once we process our data, we uh, see, um, um, so here we can see the comparison of uh, uh, the global uh, stress strains from simulations and from experiments. And we see that in zone A, the yield point and flow stress is different due to Luder's band effect, which is not captured in the simulations. Um, and then in zone B, the simulation results are very close to um, uh, the experimental um, results. And this is where we will focus on and that simulation results are relatively nicely capturing the overall deformation behavior of the material in this zone. And in zone C, the damage initiation starts to take place and propagate and, and, and the material starts to degrade. And that is something also which we will talk about that how locally the damage is initiating and propagating in our material. So to, to compare the local results, what I have done here is I have uh, tried to compare the stress and strain distributions, um, the stresses on top, the strains at the bottom, uh, for both uh, material cases side to side. So for example, at 5% of true global strain, uh, we see that um, the stress is uh, relatively homogeneously distributed um, in, in, in the material B, whereas it is relatively heterogeneously distributed in places where there were cluster, clusters of uh, cementite particles. When we are not clearly able to see the strain distributions here because of the scaling, but we will see now. And then when, once we increase the uh, uh, this, the global strain to 15%, we now then start to clearly see the effects of heterogeneity in the stresses. For example, they line up on the areas where the cementite clusters are um, um, the bigger cementite clusters and also depending on the grain orientation. So we see that there are some grains where uh, the stresses are relatively low. But on the other side, we see when the cementite particles are relatively homogeneously distributed, the stress distribution is relatively homogeneous and so on. And then uh, for 25% of the global true strain, we see that um, the stresses further increase uh, to very high levels in material A, whereas they remain more or less homogeneous in material B, higher, but not that heterogeneous. And then we also see that the, str uh, the strains in this material A are also very high, uh, especially in the areas where the cementite clustering has happened. And because the cementite particles are evenly distributed in the matrix here. So we see that the, the strains are also relatively homogeneously distributed. Now it is difficult to, um, um, it, it is easy to see how the, um, the stresses or strains are distributed locally, but to have a quantitative analysis, what we did was we tried to develop probability distribution functions for the stress and strain distribution in uh, ferrite and also in cementite. So in case of ferrite, we see that in our material A, which is shown with red line, we see that the, the strains in more elements are on the higher side. So here, so the green line goes lower below, but the red line continues. So the strains, uh, the strains in ferrite metrics for this material are relatively higher on high end. And similarly for the stresses, there are some elements where the stresses are higher in the uh, in the material A. Whereas in material B, we see a relatively uh, homogeneous distribution. And yeah, it, it um, the, the, the stresses and strains are relatively, um, yeah, we see that there is uh, there is a difference. And then uh, for, the sim, uh, for the cementite, we see that the cementite particles in, um, uh, in the material B uh, uh, undergo significant strain distribution and also undergo significant uh, stresses, whereas the material particles in um, material, uh, cementite particles in material A uh, undergo relatively lower stress distribution and relatively lower um, strain distributions. Uh, due to the effect of clustering. Um, so we see that the thermomechanical treatment plays a vital role in stress and strain distribution within the metrics and within the particles. And so therefore, uh, now we would like to see how, what else we can get more information about from the simulation. So um, for at 25% of global true strain, now I'll I will only focus on the material B. So we see here, that um, 
the, the local stress and strain distribution can further be critically analyzed to see that how, where the cementite particles are and how, what is the stress and strain distribution around them uh, and depending on uh, the grain orientations. For example, in this case, the stresses and strains are relatively homogeneously distributed, whereas at some other place, with the similar presence of cementite particles within the grains um, and on the grain boundaries, the stress distribution is relatively uh, much higher as compared to uh, 0.1 and the strain distribution is still relatively similar. So depending on the grain orientations, um, the results are different and that is something which we try to capture by um, constructing some line graph. So if we take, if we, for example, look at this point three in this stress and strain diagram, we see that um, the, the stress distribution is different in different grains based on um, their orientation. And similarly, if a cementite particle is on the, uh, is on the grain boundary or near the grain boundary, the stresses are significantly higher and in the cementite, the strains are lower, the stresses are very high and so on. So yeah, we can see how they affect. So we did this study for the other materials as well, but I am not showing here in the presentation due to uh, the shortage of time. Um, yeah, yeah, so I am, so I am just finishing up. Yeah, so with the, uh, with the damage, we see that um, at 9.5% of true strain, the damage initiated on the um, ferrite cementite interfaces, as well as within the interlocked regions. And at relatively higher strains, we see that the those uh, initiations coalesce and micro cracks start to initiate and propagate uh, generally at 45 degrees to the loading axis. So the conclusions of my study um, are that these kind of numerical simulation models capture uh, the global stress and strain behavior of the materials in the relatively medium uh, st uh, strain regimes at, with, with quite good accuracy. The post-processing of the data provides us good information about how the stress and strains are distributed. And then uh, we see that the damage in spherodized steels initiates at the particle matrix interfaces and propagates at 45 degree to the loading axis. So these kind of models can be used to uh, predict the material behavior and and then coupled with um, um, intelligent um, equipment it, uh, or the simulations it can be used to engineer material microstructures, for example, for varying compositions, for varying microstructures, or depending on different loading conditions. So yeah, um, thank you very much um, for giving me time and listening to the presentation. And yeah, I am open for questions now.